Welcome back to Close Up. When we interviewed Miami Mayor Francis Suarez here in New Hampshire back in April, he said he was looking closely at running for president. Now, the 45-year-old Republican has made it official, jumping into the race the same week as the GOP frontrunner Donald Trump appeared in federal court in the mayor's city. We had a chance to talk with Mayor Suarez this week about his approach to the race. Mayor Suarez, what are you bringing to this race that you think none of the other candidates can deliver? Uh, I don't know how much time we have, <laughs> but uh, look, uh, I think that I'm a unifying candidate. I like to define myself by what I'm for, not what I'm against. Uh, and I have an incredible record uh, of success in my city uh, following a very simple model by keeping taxes low, keeping people safe, and leaning into American innovation. I think we can create a generation of prosperity, meet generational challenges, and do it while uniting this country uh, and instead of spending time focused on the kryptonite for democracy, which is division, which is what a lot of people uh, in this country are selling, uh, including sometimes the press. Uh, it seems like we want to see our country fail. It seems like we want to give uh, our opponents and our enemies uh, a victory by continuing to argue about the 20% of things that we don't agree on instead of focusing on the 80% of things that we do agree on. We all agree uh, that we want to live in safety and security. I've done that in Miami. I can do that across the country. Uh, we all believe uh, that we want to live in prosperity for ourselves and our children. We're number one in wage growth and we have the lowest unemployment in America in my city. And we all believe that our tomorrow should be better than our yesterday's. And I think it's important for a presidential candidate to lay out a positive vision of prosperity for the future. And I feel like I'm the only candidate that's actually doing that. Let's talk about the politics of this first. Right now, you've got two bigger names running out of your home state, Trump and DeSantis. Let's address the governor first. You're a local official. Most people might think it would make sense for you to get behind your governor for president. Why are you not on Team DeSantis? Well, because we're radically different. Um, we're different people. Uh, I'm someone who looks people in the eye, likes to shake their hand. I'm a people person, um, and I like to solve problems. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm here to make a, a difference, not to make a statement. Um, I focus on uh, unifying people, and, and my record of success uh, in a Democrat city uh, that was Democrat when I got there in 2017 and I was elected by 85 uh, percent has now changed uh, to be Republican uh, plus 10. So it's a 40 point swing in my time and I was reelected by 80 uh, percent in, in, in the interim. You know, I'm not here to blame people, uh, to fight with people. I'm here to solve people's problems. I'm here to listen to people and I'm here to find a way uh, to get our country to have fiscal sanity, uh, to get our country to work for its people and to focus on problems that a lot of the candidates aren't talking about like crime homelessness uh, and mental health issues uh, and drug addiction that are plaguing our cities in america then there's the former president at mar-a-lago do you think trump's many legal troubles effectively make him unelectable in november 2024 well, if you believe the polls, uh, uh, then you, you there certainly wouldn't come to that conclusion because uh, since his last, uh, um, you know, legal issue, his numbers have actually gone up. So I think, you know, what voters are going to be confronted with is a choice. Do they want uh, to redo the 2020 election? And that's a totally legitimate choice that the voters can make. Or do they want something different? And if they want something different, they have to decide between a variety of candidates that are known but maybe unexciting um, and a candidate that maybe is unknown but exciting. Uh, and I think uh, that's what our candidacy presents for people. They want to know more. When I was in New Hampshire, they wanted to know more. We connected uh, with the people of New Hampshire. Uh, and I think uh, the more that they get to know about me, the more that they're going to like it. I asked them to you know, go to my website, make a small donation, get me on the debate stage so I can talk more about my vision for America. And I can also talk about uh, why I feel that our success in Miami can be translated across our country uh, and that I have the courage that it takes to lead that transition. On immigration policy, Mr. Mayor, would you accept as president a package deal from Congress that includes a pathway to citizenship for people who are here uh, that are undocumented? You know, the easiest way I can answer that question is to say I don't think our country is ready for that uh, right now. Um, I think that that's the big part of the debate. But I think the first thing we've got to do is secure our border. We have six to seven million uh, people that are uh, entering illegally right now and creating a tremendous human trafficking crisis and fentanyl crisis. I think the next thing we have to do is we need to depower China. Nobody talks about that in the context of immigration. We're sending a trillion dollars of our wealth 
annually to China. And they're using that to subvert us in our own hemisphere, which creates uh, poverty in our hemisphere and creates immigration pressure. So we have to deal with China effectively. I think number three, there has to be a rational basis between legal immigration and things like unemployment uh, and things like our declining birth rate. There are no metrics for legal immigration. It makes absolutely no sense. Um, it has to serve our country. And by the way, in the city of Miami, we have a 1.7% unemployment, uh, which is great until you want to open up a small business and then you need employees. So there needs to be a nexus between legal immigration and unemployment and declining birth rate. That will solve a big pro part of the problem. And then there needs to be some status for those uh, who are here illegally or undocumented because uh, those people right now are living in the shadows. We don't know who they are. Um, they may or may not be contributing uh, to our tax base, which we have, you know, runaway federal spending, uh, entitlements that are going to go bankrupt. And we need to know who they are from a national security perspective. Certainly one of the things people talk about over the long term is the potential for climate change to make things even more unstable, force even more people up to our southern border. And clearly in Miami, you've dealt with this issue already quite a bit. But what would your climate policy be as president? You know, Miami, we like to say uh, the environment is the economy. We don't think it's a dichotomy. We don't think you have to choose the environment or the economy. Uh, I, I think in Miami, we realize that our environment is existential, right? Our drinking water is in the Everglades. We've got to protect the Everglades. We have ecotourism in the amount of billions of dollars. We've got to protect our coral reef system, right? And then we have uh, these storms that hit us, uh, and we see these climatic phenomena all across America. Uh, all the studies show that for a dollar that you spend prophylactically in advance, you save seven to eight dollars after a disaster. And so I think we have to uh, be a country that invests its infrastructure dollars wisely. Um, and that's not something that we have been uh, uh, throughout my lifetime. Uh, and I think if we do make targeted investments, we're going to be able to deal with the climate challenge uh, head on. And I also think that the private sector is a big part of it. We're seeing, you know, uh, the electric car revolution. Hopefully solar uh, gets to a place where every single person can afford uh, solar panels. Um, and so that, that's going to be part of, of the process. I, what I don't agree with is uh, climate policy as social engineering. And we've seen that from the Democratic side. Last question for you, Mr. Mayor. Would you continue the Biden administration's policy toward Ukraine in its war with Russia? Look, this is a war we have to win. However, uh, I would say that uh, America's projection of weakness, which has happened under this administration, has emboldened our enemies. We've seen, uh, obviously, Putin invade Ukraine. We, we've seen Xi do things as aggressive as potentially putting a spy base in Cuba 90 miles away from our shore. This must stop. We have an $800 billion military spending budget. Russia has an $80 billion military spending budget. We have given Ukraine more than the totality of the annual spending budget of the US you know of Russia and so uh, you know we have to be uh, smart about how we invest our dollars mayor Suarez thank you for joining us on close-up